Hello, in this video we are going to go over the animation editor and how you can actually animate objects within Coca Studio. So the animation editor is right down here or you can go to window and go to animation like so. Obviously I've just deselected it. I want to select it and let's just make this a little bigger. So what we're going to do, we've got some assets, just going to drag on one of these. And you just basically create a sprite with that image on and down here first of all we have the scene which is basically what we have open which is main scene.csd we have our object and the object is based on this name right here so if we were to change this to hello cocos it changes to hello cocos if we click this little arrow it basically opens up the different properties that we can modify in animation skewing scaling and positioning this allows us to make the object invisible or visible. So this is great if you've got loads of objects in here, you've animated them all, you just want to see how one or two look, you can just select this on and off. So that is great. So let's just close that a second. What else do we have? Automatic frame recording. We'll actually go over that in a moment. Image referencing it basically enables you to... Uh, what did it say again? Enable automatic frame recording, which is obviously just linked to that. And this allows you to just add different animation. So, what this is, if I were to click edit, we can add a new animation. And what this will be is you set a start and end frame. And if you were to play it, it will just play those frames instead of playing it from zero to basically your last frame. You can just see a certain chunk of it. And the plus button allows you to add frames as well like so so that's what you can do so first of all let's actually add some keyframes so just make sure this is at zero that's probably best right click add frame and now basically this is one frame and we got it running at 15 frames a second at the moment that will be fine for the moment and we're gonna add another frame at frame 30 add another one on frame 30 we're gonna make this move to here so as you can see it moves like so it's that simple to do animation so let's just play it as you can see and it's automatically just looping Oops, oopsie there you go it stopped and it stopped because i did either loop animation or play once so if you only wanted to play once another thing i want to show you is basically i'll, I'll show you this i'll add another animation so if i just do test anim 15 to 20 oh no 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 15 and 25 click that and now if i just play this all it's going to do is play between 15 frame, frame 15 and frame 25 inclusively. So that's pretty cool. So if you have, let's say, a running animation, a standing animation, a sleeping animation, a jumping animation, that's something that you would have for a character. You can easily just have like one big frame or one big animation and just have different animations set like so. So we're just going to do all for now because you've seen how that works. So let's just stop this another thing that we want to look at is basically this this basically allows you to set the type of movement or scaling or skewing that you're doing linear is just the same consistency throughout let's say if i were to do sign ease in and for the end i'm going to put something like back ease in so let's say let's play that now actually I'll do this one mm, let's try and find something that will really help illustrate what I'm trying to show you let's go back to here set this to something like yeah elastic easing and out 
So as you can see what it's doing, it's basically sort of bouncing, which is, you can see this curve, that's what it's doing. So if you know what you're doing with this, uh, at that particular moment I wasn't too sure, um, but you can select a different one, generally probably just being in linear. Maybe if you've got a menu item coming in, you'll have it bouncing. And then you can even do a custom curve if you really know what you're doing. So you can just drag these around like so. Again, only do if you know what you're doing and then you can set them manually as well. So let's just, actually I'll leave that as it is. So let's say if I were to go here and move this, it's no longer moved. And the reason is because you didn't set a keyframe. So you right click, add frame, but there's another way you can do it. You can do automatic frame recording. So let's say on number 20, I want the egg to be down here. It automatically adds a frame now for whatever type of modification or whatever property I'm modifying of that object. Now if I were to play it, so it basically moves down because the keyframe says go down here from its original position, then it moves up, let's zoom out a bit. Let's play that again. There we go, so what we're also gonna do I want to change the scale as well. So if I just scroll down, let's just make this a little smaller. So you can change the scale and skew right here. So let's change the scale for the purpose of this. 450. Now let's play it. Oh, that that actually looked quite cool. Um, let's just zoom out a bit more, so you can. See so watch what happens when I click play. So it moves down and it goes up there. So it's almost sort of replicating what it would look like if you were to hit the ground. Obviously it's a little delayed, but that's pretty cool. That's what you can do with animation. And you might be thinking what we've done is very simple and it is, not for the most part. It's going to be a bunch of simple stuff combined to make very cool stuff. I forgot to just properly explain this frames per second, how many frames you want to run per second. So we have a total of 30 frames for this animation for running at 15 frames per second. Do the math. This animation takes 60 frames. So let's say if I were to do it at 60 frames, it only takes half a second. So you can customize it. I think 15 was quite nice for the amount of frames that we had in here. They're looking quite trippy then. So yeah, I would recommend checking out the skew, scale, positioning, and multiple objects. Make them bounce around, make them move around, have static objects as well, and sort of create a dynamic environment. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php. There will be a link in the description and as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.